Dream are a pop, rock and dance group who had a UK number one hit with Things Can Only Get Better in 1994, followed by eight more top 40 hits, including You Are The Best Thing and Shoot Me With Your Love. And Peter and Al from Dream are both on the line with us here. How are you doing today? Very good, Tony. How are you? I'm very well, thanks. Toby. <laughs> Toby. I put, just put my glasses on and got it right now. <laughs> <laughs> So how did you two get together in the first place and start making music? I was uh, quite young. I was about the early 20s and I was living in West London. I used to go into this club called uh, The Brain in Wardour Street. It's kind of like the WAG club, you know, that kind of vibe back in the uh, late 80s, 90s. And um, Alan was a resident there at The Brain Club. That's correct. And uh, I really liked the sound he was making. And I, I was struggling to make that sound because I was trying to make records that would work in that nightclub. So I just approached him and we ended up standing at the bar and he said he'd come over and help me. And, and that was kind of just the start of it, really. And your music incorporates pop, rock and dance. And at the time when you started out, that was something quite revolutionary. Well, it still kind of is. I mean, we, we don't, I don't know, think a lot of people were very marmitey, Toby, if you know <laughs> what I mean. And uh, that's that's okay because um i don't think you should be able to be like i, I was really struck the other day i was listening to uh, hit me baby one more time and then the follow-up whoops i did it again and i thought that's what they asked me to do with things going to get better and i was going like well, i'm not going to take the same song and rewrite it just with that slight adjustment that's not how we roll i thought so they we, were the same songs <laughs> it's, <definitely, laughs> it's the same girl <laughs> it's definitely the same girl we're in the same outfit no less Whoa. Um, but no, I mean, Brittany, well, you know, for, for more power to her elbow. But what I'm saying is we don't, I don't know, we're working in the studio today and we're just thinking, should we be like that or do that? Let's just see where the music takes us. And that's what we've done. So you know, we just explore what we do creatively. And if it turns us on, we hope it turns everyone else on. And so far, so good. I don't think you've pigeonholed anyway. You don't, music's just music and it can be all, all form. Yeah. You now, if we could do some cosmic jazz record, it's very unlikely we do some cosmic jazz record, but we could. <laughs> and, you know, and that, that, well, that's cool well, with us. So. Yeah. Well, you know, are you have you been touched by lizard people? You know all about this? I have no idea. I don't really think you I'm going to hear this. No, okay. No, I'm just saying. I haven't either. <laughs> no, we're, we're good. You've been touched. No, some people would say I've been touched. <laughs> and how would you say your sound has evolved over the years? Is it different now than it was when you started out? Certainly. I mean, if you listen to The Difference Between Pedestal, our new record, and uh, where we were when we started on You're the Best Thing, is, is quite quite a leap, I think. You know, we're still using the, the dance form in, insofar as we've got four to the floor and, and everything that goes around that. But uh, in terms of the riches and depth, it's, yeah, it's moved on a little bit. But that's experience, though, isn't it? Because that's, that's, you know, that's 30 years ago, we, more than 30 years ago when <laughs> we were doing that. And, and in that time, you learn things, just studio stuff and just... No, you, you experience so things will evolve. Or, but if it doesn't evolve, then you really shouldn't be in the game. Yeah. Yeah. I think. I think. I, but as Peter just said, what you said earlier on, because we don't pigeonhole ourselves. The music essentially will will always just do whatever, whatever touches us. It just, I think, technically, you know, we're we're a bit more efficient than we used to be. Yeah, yeah. And we do, we don't um, go into those really big studios anymore. And spend, I mean, it's a shame because I was watching a program on Abbey Road the other night, and they're they're struggling to get artists in through the door. We'll, we'll go wow. actually if yeah. you want to get let's for nothing. No, well, they, they don't do that, but they, they let like um, pretty much anyone off the street come in and make a record. Yeah, that's nice. So that would be us then. Yeah, yeah. No, that would yeah. be us then. I know, I've been on the streets many times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And handling. <laughs> Yeah, you say you don't go to these big studios and these days you kind of are like an indie band, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, well, we we well, we well parted company and then I fell outside of the major studio system and we weren't really going to ever be doing what we do ever again. And then we met by accident in the park at the back of my house in 2008. And uh, if you told me that the lawyers were going to get the band back together, I would have just told you, showed you the door, putting it politely. And, um, you know, but when I saw Alice sitting there, you know, um, with his friends and stuff, I just went over to say hello. And we just struck up our friendship again and then and, and continued on where we left off just because I met him face to face. And yeah, it's become like an indie band, definitely. Um, but you know what? We're operating within our own um, artistic confines now. We don't have big budgets. We don't have the hype, but we're still making great records. And that's what's keeping us going. And we're out, you know, we're out live quite a bit as well, which is good. So, um, I mean, what can I say? It's, 
we're not young. We're not young and pretty like which what all the record companies want, basically. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, you know, there's not really a market for two sort of fifty something, um, still relatively oh. handsome young men. <laughs> <laughs> but the market's not really there, so the record companies aren't going to give us a lot of cash to go to the studio. So we we just do our thing. We know we know our market. We know what we like doing. And again, we we, we won't we can't be told what to do, which is something we've learned over the years. We, yeah, we're, we we've always struggled with authority. <laughs> So, but we'll just make yeah. rec- the music we like, and um, and it, it, if people like it, that's great, and yeah. that's for with us. We like it, and that's the first major goal completed. Yeah, if we're feeling it. We hope. Yeah, and, uh, too. but yeah, we 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 can't really conform to the mainstream sort of thing, and and we, we we're not really in the on, on the radar. So we just mm. you know we're hoping that possibly we'll get a bigger audience as you know. Well, if we keep as my dad said, if you when you no, I won't, I'm not going to repeat that on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> I said he, he always had to say he says if, if you keep your hand at it long enough you come into your own yes oh. exactly yeah. I'm not sure where you're going with that but, no, but yeah I think it's a great yeah, it's great right. bit of advice yeah well there you go <laughs> and here's the annoying question you get all the time probably how did you come up with the name Dereem uh, <laughs> well I did take this on because we've got yeah. Peter, Peter and I have got different um, stories recollections. about this. <laughs> now, my recollection is we had some gigs in the day and we didn't actually have a name because we, we the clubs I was doing I'm a PA going and made this, so it's a last minute thing. My recollection is that there's a song <laughs> called uh, Life in a Northern Town by the Dream Academy in the 80s, and I thought it was all dreaming, the girl, which is kind of like our sign. I thought, well, there'll be lots of other bands called, De- called Dream, so we'll, and there's bands at the time called The Influence and whatever. Mm. Uh, so Delight. Song, Delight. And that. So yeah. we thought, well, we'll put a call on it, little realising at the time that's the worst move ever. Between the D and the R, we put the call on the it. Webs, the, the interweb was about to start happening. And that's <laughs> an illegal <laughs> character. It's like an old man now, the interweb. The interweb. He's still, <laughs> yeah, he's, he's still <laughs> call it the telly box too don't you <laughs> yeah and a transistor that's yeah. it yeah so him um, again yeah, we chucked a call in the middle of the dream now pete got something about the dream on that one because well, there's no way he's, he was thinking about the dream boys well maybe he was yeah. but, but I, we all know the dream boys are a strip hat male strip hat <laughs> he seems to think something else so i think we'll stick with the dream academy story because yeah. it sounds a little bit better and a little <laughs> less sordid yes oh, no, I, I know i was there so i'm, I'm sticking <laughs> i'm sticking to my <laughs> story both there. That's not the story I told. But I, I certainly wasn't dressed in um, in spandex. And, no, that's the whole point. You weren't and, dressed. And oiled up. You weren't dressed, and I thought, you know, he just tries to get his kit off constantly. <laughs> so we call ourselves the Dream Boys. <laughs> so, so it's one of those. It's one of those stories. You, you pick whichever you want. Yeah. But it was a last minute thing. Basically, we were desperate for names, so we came up with it. And yeah, and as I say, if we'd known about colons and illegal God, HTML God, characters, we'd get a bit wrong again. Uh, we were not yeah. knew about colons and legal characters in the web. We, we wouldn't have used that. We'd have we, done a dash. We'd have yeah. been a dash, but deep, hey, yeah. But you know, on hindsight, I know exactly. It's the story of our lives, isn't it? Making yeah. wrong decisions. <laughs> well, it is quite annoying that colon because every time in preparation for this interview, when I went to look you up by using the very top search bar, it would say file not found. Yes, exactly. And reaming, yeah. and as, as I found out afterwards, reaming is a whole different, a different thing because it, oh. it, it keeps getting misses a D when you put the head on and reaming. Yeah, but joy. Essex apparently really means really cool. So no, it means kosher. Oh. I think it's a Jewish yeah, term yeah, for it's, kosher. It does, yeah. yeah. It has other meanings, but let's not go Yeah, yeah let's not go there. <laughs> now, your best known hit is Things Can Only Get Better, and it actually took three years for that song to be fully formed, right? From first kind of writing that, it to it being that's right. produced. Yeah, yeah. It um well it, it had different sort of guises to start with. It was uh um it sounded more like sympathy for the devil by the Rolling Stones, and then I just parked it from Llewellyn and I were working on a remix it just seemed some of them sit over the top really well um so yeah and then i had time to work on the verses in the you know the light of being in clubland and all the rest of it so yeah we just the bit was we had the kind of record appearing but it was nothing working for the chorus and we'd gone in several times to different studios to see if we could um just make it work it just wasn't sitting right in its skin if it makes any sense and um yeah so we we had one session where we i suppose eight ten singers come in and layer up and that didn't work and then three months after that we did the same thing and that didn't work and then we eventually get some um like some professionals in rather than friends and and that didn't work but my producer tom fredericks our producer at the time um brought me in one day and says listen to this and he pulled up all three faders with the different sessions on it and that was the size the amount of voices that gave things its its sound 
which would be like a gospel choir today. But we didn't know that's what it needed. It just it sounded right when he pulled up all these sessions because there must be best part of 60, maybe more voices on there. Wow. It's a song that can relate to people in all sorts of different circumstances. You know, people will probably automatically think of the song being used by Labour in 1997, but also it helped during lockdown and in the Northern Irish peace process. Did you ever imagine it would resonate with people in so many different ways? Not really. I mean, we, we, were, we knew we'd wanted the, the, the boys and girls that we were um playing for at, at, at Alan's Club, the Love Ranch, and then later on, um sorry, it was it was Love Ranch, Love Ranch it was yeah. later on, yeah. Uh, that was we were really playing to them and that that whole sort of loved up nineties scene. Um but then when it becomes a hit and it becomes such a big hit, you you've really got no control over it at all. People take it on. They've got all sorts of um understandings of it and it, it you know fulfills a lot of their um, uh, wishes in different ways and that's okay that's the way music should be it should be enjoyed by everyone in their own way you know there's no uh, you can't make a thing that you can't write well I'm not the KLF should be thinking you could with that thing but, but <laughs> you, you, you can't write a song and to for a specific think this is going to work here here there that's just not how things work no, you, not, you write a song for yourself and hope you think hope people like it hmm. and that's just Pete said there if people take it on whichever way that's yeah. great and, I, and now, now it's been done like that you can kind of see oh yeah yeah I can see how that gets used for these things yeah so, well, there's yeah. that ladies that uh, cancer choir they used yeah. it chris uh hayton's covered it and uh it's great it's got a life of its own it's really you know yeah i suppose if you do your, your work as a parent right the child goes into the world and makes its own way yes yes, yes. That's correct thank you well done you go. a really, really good analogy of that thank you. and do you mind that it's always going to be that song that's associated with you well, it depends who's doing the association. <laughs> <laughs> some people don't like it, funny enough. And some, yeah. people, some people prefer you to sing, for example. That's no, so the calling card has kept us, you know, getting Does gigs it? and stuff. Can't you can't? You know, well, I some don't mind it. It's just it's, it's what it is. At the end of the day, you we you know I, we've got other songs. Songs. Well, I, I, the people who really know us and are, are found us, you know, on the internet are really enjoying what we're doing now, and that's mm-hmm. that's great. So I know that. Uh, that were uh, sort of broadening their. I think if if things was the only song that people knew us for, or was the only thing people, then I think it might get quite annoying yeah. very quickly. But yeah. thankfully, we do have a more material, and, and do people do like it? So we're happy. Mm-hmm. Well, I am. Are you? Are you happy, people? Partially happy. That's good. Partially. Yeah. Partially. <laughs> Why not completely? Oh, well, well, you've got, you got, not... got to sit with me half a day. <laughs> <laughs> like to do the music. He's just answered that one. Uh, well, <laughs> there's always room for improvement, Toby. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Now, do you keep in touch with any other former members of the band? I'm thinking of a famous physicist in particular. Don't know who you mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Brian, he's just really busy, isn't he? So it's good. I mean, I, I interviewed him. I had a radio uh, slot on here in BBC Radio Ulster um, a couple of years back now. And that's the last time I really spoke with him. But um, I had to ring him up, I think, about a year ago because someone was online impersonating me selling... Um, uh, no, I <laughs> Was selling was selling access to Brian via me. Oh really? Oh. Yeah. So I called his office because I don't know. You know, the online world is a cesspit yes. <laughs> of humanity. Thank God knows what. So, so some fans got in touch with me and said, "Is this true? Is this you?" And I was, "Wow." And then, so I called Brian's office and said, listen, we're going to have to do something about this because I, you know, I haven't got the resources you have, but there's some character here doing this. But I think they've gone quiet because I think secretly, I am um, suspect and I'm worried that they think it is me. <laughs> 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 and, uh, well, I'm not like that. You know, I'm not like that. No, no. no. So you've tried to sell me a few times. No, yeah, but, <laughs> but if you do want to, if you do want to speak with Brian, it's a thousand pounds, and <laughs> yeah. I'll sort it out. And okay, you, yeah, just just send an email to me, and I'll, I'll do the deal. For He'll you. do the deal and take his cut. So, uh, yeah. yeah, but it's not us. It wasn't us. It's lovely to know that the fame that he's had since leaving the band hasn't gone to his head. Oh, he's great. Brian's is what you see, what you get. I mean, he's genuinely. Really a lovely man but he's also obsessed with his his uh, science world and bringing science to the masses and his hero is Carl Sagan I don't know he's probably too young to remember but in the 70s Carl Sagan was the poster boy for science and Brian's kind of taken up that mantle I, I couldn't be in my estimation it couldn't happen to a nicer man he's great really really good did he talk about space all the time when he was in the band all the time he had a he had a book on him when we were in the tour coach and I swear I'd get off I was reading a book on Napoleon at the time Little Man Syndrome that Alan would say and Levain 
magazine, our backing singers had an OK magazine, right? But Brian would get off, and he had a he had a book that was so full of symbols, it would read the same to you and me if it was upside down or back to front. I swear to God, <laughs> he just you know he, that, that was his work. But I did say to him, I said Brian, I've got I'm, I have to take some credit for your career. And what do you mean? I said, well, you know, I reckon you cut your teeth explaining really complicated things to stupid people like me on the turcoat. <laughs> you know, actually, I'll give you that. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> and how did he join the band originally? Because he started out as the driver, right? That's right. Um, well, the D driver. The, the, yeah. <laughs> the Dean D driver. He's a uh, he was um, D dreadful uh, as D driving. As yeah. most of these uh, scientific types are, there's no practical bones in their body, and he was given the job of tour managing us one summer. And apparently, the guy that gave him the job he says, "You should do this for your summer job, Brian. They're not going anywhere or anything, but I think you'll be earning a bit of money out of it." So we end up becoming good friends, but. Brian was really bad at getting us to the venues and the oh. directions and and all of that. <laughs> the directions. The directions from the D-River. D-River. That's right. D- 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 Brian was really bad at getting directions d right. So um, we just sort of sacked him for being the driver <laughs> and caught him in on keyboards. <laughs> He was derobbed. <laughs> he was derobbed. <laughs> the, the key, the key words, that's it. This is oh, all no. my interview's going to hell here. What the <laughs> heck's going on? Um, so anyway, yeah, that's why he got he got roped in. And at the time he'd really long hair because he'd been in a band called De Air. And they yeah, they <laughs> seriously stop it. Stop it. <laughs> okay. S S up it. Okay. <laughs> stop it. And so yeah, that's why he got the, he got the job in the band and, and, and the rest is history. He did come to me when we were going to Australia, though, and he said, I'm really conflicted because if I don't finish my course here at Manchester University, um, I'm not going to get my degree or my professorship. And I said, look, Brian, when we come back from Australia, if we're still in the charts, then come and join us again. And, you know, true enough, I, I just knew we'd, we'd probably done our run by that stage four or five years. But he was on the ascendant. And I couldn't wish it for a nicer man. That's lovely. That's where you were de-rocked from the records. <laughs> <laughs> Now, until a couple of years ago, you two were on a bit of a hiatus in terms of releasing albums anyway. What were you up to during that time? Well, what we weren't up to. <laughs> um, getting divorced. Get, getting divorced, <laughs> moving country, losing touch with my children. Um, uh, losing, all, a every, bar, every, losing, losing a bar. Losing a bar. Yeah, you're just well, life. Life, you know what? Life gets in the way of things when you do, you know, when, yeah. especially if you've had it a bit and then you sort of don't have it and you're just doing stuff, you just go up, get on with other things and it, like normal people just yeah. normal people do you have the same old problems everyone else mm. and then I think uh, yeah we, we well, as Pete said we did an album in 2009 and then we kind of did the same thing again we had a bit you know just just went around doing stuff and I ended up I ended up being a quantum surveyor for a while and mm. doing stuff um, uh, yeah Peter moved country moved house moved girlfriends I, I do that quite a lot mm. not anymore darling <laughs> you're right yeah. you're, you're, you're fine I'm not going well, to it Chris Fox says the next time I meet a woman I don't like I'm just going to hand her a house <laughs> yeah. 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 so and then yeah I mean we'd always knew we were going to do another album we'd had some music we'd been working on so so when we did the album in 2021 well we'd done it before then but it came out in 2021 we always knew that was going to happen but it was just you know it was just a, when we were ready when it suited us essentially and that's uh, that's what we did so we made we made a new album which we think is the best thing we've done obviously it won't be the best thing we've done because we started a new one and that's going to be the best thing Done, <laughs> obviously <laughs> yes <laughs> so no but the thing is this one the distance between this one and uh, open hearts up with minds our last yeah, we'll, be, yeah. anywhere near is great because we're more settled now and we know what we're doing and we've got some nice things lined up for this year as well which get, getting us really focused on the the months that are coming up exactly we'll be rock stars again Peter. oh so indie stars dance stars i don't know whatever we're just going to be stars aren't we yeah. i'm trying to think i'm trying to think of the answer smash version to this but I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, in our in our D rooms. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so that was D red fun. Yeah, and what else is coming up that you can tell us about and things that you haven't mentioned? Gigs, lots of gigs. We can't mention. We're hoping to get some. We're, we're talking to some big people. We'll see what happens with them. We're not going to send <laughs> jinx those. But we've got plenty of gigs. Going to be a tour uh, towards the end of the year. That's going to be the proper tour. But lots of festivals, lots of little gigs here in little villages and stuff, and just whatever you know. 
hopefully I've got a remix that we've still got coming and we'll have a, we've got a single out at the moment called Pedestal which is I think there's a thing it, called Heritage, Heritage Chart which is number did. five in at the moment which is Mike Reed who used to do yeah. radio one year ago he does yeah. this chart now it's like an alternative to the top charts we're in that chart at the moment riding high five, yeah. Yeah, but, I mean it went in 40, 40 something or other yeah. Yeah. So that, in April where are we in April that was our first show well, oh 30th of April is our first show yeah in, in Scotland we're doing Air Pavilion and we're doing a thing in Middlesbrough the same day, I believe, mm -hmm. um, and then then we'll be touring loads from then. I think we're we'll doing lots of gigs. They're all coming in. Yes, it's, mm -hmm. lockdown is officially over, and the gigs are starting to come in now. So we're, yeah. um, we're it's looking quite like it should be quite a good year. We're, obviously, we're in the studio now. We I we intend to get some bits done yeah. here towards the album. So hopefully, we'll have some new stuff and coming out. September, they're talking about a live tour. Yeah, that's a tour in September. Yeah, so yeah, and that's we're not talking. We're doing. We're doing. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> to speak. Yeah, it's just a matter of how many gigs we can manage well yeah we just we just look we, we we're off in Asia. We've, we've still got it in us just about. I think we're not, we won't quite, I don't think we're ever going to get the Rolling Stones yeah, stage. Yeah, I refuse to take up yoga. But, um, <laughs> but um, I think uh, we, we've got a couple of years in us yet. Yeah, two. Two. Two, two years. Two years, yeah. At least. <laughs> at most two and, years. And then I will be at the Knackers yard. That's yes. it. Um, You'll be lucky to do anything at Mick Jagger's yep. age, let alone touring. Well, certainly well, not like that. No. Well, <laughs> speak for yourself. <laughs> well, you got the moves like Jagger. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you get moves like that, I'll be actually calling the doctors yeah. to get carried away. Yeah, yeah. you've I obviously was, got some neurological was, disease. I wasn't talking about dancing moves. Okay. Okay. I was yeah, talking yeah. about the moves with the ladies. Oh, the moves with the smooth and the ladies. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. yeah, and you have to make me wake up hugging the pillow again. <laughs> I'm de yeah. <laughs> Well, many thanks to both of you for coming on. Where can we keep up to date with you, by the way, and find out when all this stuff is announced? Social media is best, and Facebook's definitely the best sort of format for it because you just put de in and it comes up. And there's and yeah. we're sort of any colons on, we, on that? Yeah, you, I, I believe <laughs> we, I, I believe you can put the de, de colon in and it works on Facebook. I believe. So we, that's that kind of the first place. We, we we've got a Bandcamp site which got all the music on there, and all the music's available all over the place now. So we we have succumbed to Spotify and all that lot. So we, we, we're it's all it's all there if people want to look. And we have our own YouTube channel with all the new videos we're doing. And yeah, we we we're there. Mm -hmm. we, we 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 have a presence online. Mm -hmm. You know, not everyone wants to look at our ugly mugs, but. <laughs> they are there if you want to if you want to see them. Yeah, yeah, you're beautiful. Also. Many yeah. thanks to both of you for coming thanks, on. It's Toby. been dreadfully good Toby. to have you here. <laughs> uh, you Toby. Cheers, Toby. <laughs> <laughs>